I'm a dinosaur. Is he a pre-war dinosaur or a pre-free-war dinosaur? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I can give him radioactive gum? Nuh-uh. That gum gets dinosaurs sick. Hey, do you have any toys outside of here? I sure could use something fun. I... Gum is fun? <laughs> Ick. My big sister got super sick chewing that stuff. The boomers are not going to be happy with me if I keep trying to give their kids gum. Ah, who cares? Whoa. You're the outsider? What are you doing here? Giving out free gum! No way! Pearl said that stuff will get us sick. Damn, how did Pearl know that we'd be coming in here and trying to poison their children? I know, right? I am La Fantoma. I will fly to the side of injustice. La Fantoma probably wants some power gum, and I assure you there aren't any razor blades in it. <laughs> La Fantoma doesn't want to get sick again. No nasty gum for her. Why well, don't these kids want any gum? How much medical experience do you have? I know how to apply leeches. I know how to do a trepanation. What is a trepanation? Did you just make that word up? Do you not know? I think you made that word up. I don't think you want to know what one is. Tell me what a trepanation is. Trepanation is where you bore a hole into the skull to let a bunch of bad blood and pressure out. I don't think you should be allowed near this doctor's patients. I think it'll be fine. Where is this doctor? I need to trepanate these. Ah, medical station. Don't worry. It's just going to be a small exploratory boring. <laughs> Hello. Hey. I know Mother Pearl is letting you wander Nellis as you please, outsider, but I have patience to tend to. Well, that's what we're here for. I'm looking for ways to make myself useful. For example, that x-ray right there? Get rid of it. I have three patients here who were gravely injured fighting those giant ants in the generator building a few <laughs> days ago. Oh, <laughs> those giant ants. I've stabilized ants. their wounds, but they're in bad shape. Do you have medical training? Come over here, injured boomer. Let's see that virgina. This man appears to be severely injured. Swelling around his face and neck is interfering with his breathing. Improper treatment will kill him. Are you sure you want to treat him? How much medicine skill do you have? Attempt to treat him! Yo, you have just enough skill to recognize that you are about to do more harm than good! You stop before lacerating his face! Trepanation! I'm telling you! You gotta bore a hole in the skull to let the bad blood out. Okay. Now, nurse, retractor. This man looks like he has a serious infection. Improper treatment will kill him. Would you like to treat him? Yes! With a combination of natural herbs, bandages, and some disinfectant, you were able to clean the wounds and help the patient survive. I thought that man was done for, but you brought him around. You thought that man was done for and I brought him around? Are you aware of how low my medical skill is? Yeah. You should not have let me in here. I, <laughs> I can't believe we may see the super fortress built in my lifetime. How about that damn super fortress? Crazy that Yeah, I, you won't shut up about it. If I haven't said it before, outsider, let me say it now. Welcome to Nellis. <laughs> this man's leg is seriously injured. It may require amputation to save him. Are you sure you want to attempt the operation? Ta ta ta! <laughs> you pull out your blade and hack blindly at the leg. After a series of random and frenetic cuts, you notice the leg is looking a lot better. It looks like he'll be able to keep it after all. Now I know what they mean by dumb luck. <laughs> <laughs> what else can we do to help people around here? Oh, Jack. We have to deal with Jack. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> I can't believe we may see the super fortress built in my lifetime. How about that super fortress that we might- <laughs> You Everything, feel... uh, is anything kind of fuzzy to anybody else? It tastes like Tuesday. <laughs> what I could use is some scrap metal. It may not sound exciting, but around here we have to recycle every rivet and plate. The other thing, you being from the outside and all, well, I guess you'd call it a personal matter, but, well, Personal matter, huh? Uh, guy like you? I bet there's a girl involved. I took the word handsome out of there because I don't think he's handsome. You think I'm handsome? Yes, he I does! I never said uh, that! I wonder if she does too. Bet huh. she's got a couple of tomatoes, huh? Yeah! <laughs> Dame walked into my door. She should have opened it. <laughs> Dame walks into my office. Legs that go all the way up and gams that just don't quit. She was trouble. Knew she wouldn't be. Dame's always, yeah. <laughs> There's an outpost near here. The signs say, Crimson Caravan? You can't see that from here! <laughs> well, every once in a while, I watch the outpost through one of the spotter's binoculars. And sometimes there's this girl there. This special girl. And sometimes it's like she's watching me back with her binoculars. Except, she's probably just watching Nellis. I guess I'll go talk to her for you. What does she look like? 
Oh, you can't miss her. She has short red hair, and she's the most beautiful woman who ever lived. You'd really talk to her for me? What if she feels the same way? What if she comes here like you did? What if she gets blown up? What if she doesn't like me? God, you are more awkward than I am, and that's fucking saying something. Let's go find Jack's love interest. Oh, you ever hear of a drink called the Predator Vision? No. Take an Adderall XR30, right? You open it up, you dump all the Adderall and the little time release things into a vintage Four loco. You slam the whole thing, and then do a bong rip. And it gives you Predator Vision. <laughs> what? I... So you see stuff like the Predator, and then you have a heart attack and fucking die. <laughs> I've come up with a bunch of really stupid drinks, and I wrote some of them down. The Battle of Eep is wine, spicy mustard, and dirt, served in a rusty canteen cup, preferably while being mortared. <laughs> I, I've not actually had one of those. Just I you know. can't believe it. Uh, here's one for all oh, of... Uh, you... <laughs> what? We're just passing by this corpse here, just talking about drinks. Oh! I forgot he was there. <laughs> um, here's one for all you Star Wars fans. It's the Battle of Yavin. Tequila, vodka, beet juice, served with a slice of lemon, which you will hereful refer to as gold leader for the entire time you're drinking it, out of a ceramic mug with cooling fins. Maybe that's humorous as somebody who knows Star Wars. The Operation Market Garden. Kentucky bourbon with mint leaves. Fill in the remainder of glass with Fanta Cola. Finish off the drink with a shot of Grosslich. <laughs> a shot of what? Grosslich. It's a German beer. All these jokes are going over my head. Operation Market Garden was a failed U.S. operation in World War II. So you start out with Kentucky bourbon, which is a U.S. drink. You completely overpower it with Fanta, which is a German World War II drink. <laughs> and then finish it off with a shot of Grosslich, <laughs> which is a German beer. Ow! Hey, come on! I'm doing history jokes! There's the Linda Blair, which is a Bloody Mary with pea soup violently injected into the drink. <laughs> I don't get that one, but it sounds crude. It's a reference to The Exorcist. Because the scene where Linda Blair was, like, screaming and throwing hey up. Oh, god damn it. Here's the rest of the payment I promised. Sure. Oh, man. Ringo, I completely forgot about you. I completely forgot you existed. Uh, Thanks. see ya. I'll see you around. Thanks for the 150 caps. You should go talk to Blake or Alice. They handle most of our contact with visitors. I don't suppose you watch the boomers over in Nellis sometimes, do you? Why did that sound so awkward when I said it out loud? I watch all sorts of things with my binoculars. Who wants to know? And why? I've actually been inside Nellis, and there's a guy who's, um... Uh, he's... Nice-looking blonde boy? I always wondered if he was watching me back. What's he like? How can you see him?! <laughs> he's nice, very, very naive, for some <laughs> crazy reason. <laughs> he thinks you're the love of his life. Can you and he says that? that he wants to lock you in his basement forever. Wait, <laughs> I wouldn't go over there, personally. Really? Oh, that's so sweet. What? I'd love to go meet him. Is there any way the boomers would let me visit Nellis? I'll talk to Pearl, I guess. I really was hoping to avoid this, but... <laughs> yeah, we'll try and get you in. This is so exciting. Let me know how it turns out. You tried to dissuade her by telling her that she'd get locked in a sex dungeon, but turns out that's her fetish. Oh, God, that's weird. <laughs> You have done well to earn the trust of my people, child. Jack is interested in a lady. Well, well, this is welcome news. Who is she? Some kooky dame looking for love. <laughs> <laughs> let me, oh, let me man. tell you about this broad. Man, she has some weird kinks, and I don't even want to tell you about them. Let me tell you about them. God, they're weird. <laughs> <laughs> she works for Crimson Caravan. This presents a bit of a problem. Jack isn't allowed to leave Nellis, and I doubt she would make it through the artillery alive. Yeah, how about that? Maybe you should not blow her up. Sorry, but I can't risk exposing the tribe to more savage outsiders. I assure you, she's no threat to the tribe. Very well, I'll take your word. When you say she isn't a threat to the tribe, I will allow her entry. If Jack will take responsibility for her. Washing my Once hands. she is through the gate, she is your problem. Uh, and I if you don't have enough braces and rope to deal with her, that is your problem. Why are you always throwing the weird kinks out there? It's not my kink. Okay, <laughs> well, okay, yeah, it is my kink, but that's irrelevant. It's her kink, and that's what I'm talking about. Have you seen her? The redhead of my dreams? Yeah, good news. She feels the same way or something, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't she, listening. She does? You mean it? That's incredible. What happens next? Can she come here? 
How do we make sure she doesn't get blown up? Janet just needs a way past the artillery, that's all. Take this boomer outfit. I'll let the gunners know she's coming, and not to shoot at her. What's the, what's the boomer outfit for? That's... If he's gonna tell the gunners not to shoot at her, then why doesn't he just stand out there <laughs> and be like, Hey, look, here she comes. Don't shoot at her, guys. Lady, look here. Why the fuck are you sweeping dirt? <laughs> why are you sweeping dirt? She's gotta clean up the dirt. She's gotta tidy up. Janet. Janet. Just, hey! Janet, you walk through her dirt! Just stop it! You're gonna God, get, get out of here! You're gonna get dirt everywhere! Hello again. How's your boomer friend? I've got a boomer uniform for you to wear while you cross to Nellis. There's one more thing. I have a work contract with the Crimson Caravan, and if I walk away, I lose the wages they owe me. Could you do just one more thing for me and talk to Alice McLafferty about it? You've gotta be kidding me. No, you're kidding me, right? This is a joke? It's all a big funny joke, right? I'm gonna do like they do in every 90s movie with an animal in it. Go! Go! Get out of here! The government's coming to take you away! I don't love you anymore! <laughs> and I throw a rock and you run off into the woods, but only come back later and bite the villain at the last scene in the movie, and it's really emotional. Welcome to the Crimson Caravan Company, New Vegas branch. What may I do for you? Let my people go. I just turned into Moses. <laughs> ah, yes. Her infatuation with a boomer she's never met. It's a small camp. More gets around. Janet is free to leave, but she forfeits the wages she's owed. That's the price of contract breaking. Take it or leave it. Oh, come on. She's in love. Would you put a price on love? You'll have to try harder than that. The rumors about my heart being made of stone are true. Who hurt you, wow. Alice? Who hurt you? <laughs> Opening up trade with the boomers would be easier with Janet in their camp. Don't think of this as giving up an employee. Think of this as planting a mole. Yeah, because you're a sneaky, cold-hearted bitch. Yes, and underhanded. Don't forget underhanded. And underhanded, yeah, uh, we yes. can't forget that. You're a sneaky, cold-hearted, underhanded bitch. And that is what a sneaky, cold-hearted, underhanded bitch would do. Intriguing. <laughs> Janet puts in a good word for me, and the Crimson Caravan gains exclusive access to the boomers. Yes, that works for me. Janet will be paid what she's owed. Consider it a gift. Done. Boom, done. It's the No oh. Vegas Tower. That looks nice. Yeah. It's the magic hour, Mike. Magic hour. Ah, twilight hours. Nelson will serve as example. We'll bleed the ground red with anyone who opposes our peace efforts. Yeah. I don't even know what you're talking about, but sure. Have you spoken with McLafferty yet? You're free to go. That's great. I can't believe you went through all this trouble for me. Thank you. Here, wear this boomer's outfit. You give her, like, a legionnaire's outfit. She walks out the door and gets shot by the NCR. <laughs> <laughs> or by her own people, because that's how buggy this game is. Yeah. I can't believe we may see the super fortress built in my lifetime. Shut up about the super fortress! <laughs> what if I just kill him before she gets here, and then I'm like, Oh, sorry, he stepped on a landmine. You know, whiskey and landmines don't mix. Uh, glug, 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 glug. It's great to finally meet you. Unlike targeted Hi systems. It's I know I like am well. Oh my god! Hopefully Sometimes there are, in your pants, there are mosquitoes in your pants, and if there are mosquitoes in your pants, you gotta watch out, because they'll suck your blood and not your dick. Thank you for getting Janet to Nellis. I've never been so happy in my entire life. Yeah, true love finds a way, I guess. Why don't you to go somewhere, make out in that aircraft hole or something. I don't <laughs> fucking know. Fus I'm sorry, it's not a hole, it's a fuselage. It's a fuselage, I'm sorry, I was so wrong. Also... On a completely random note, why is there a little tiny bubble up there for a gunner when there's clearly no spot for a gunner? <laughs> Good question. Why is there a gun blister there when there's no spot for the guy to stick his head out? I think this might be like a eight rotor counter rotating system, like on the uh, Tupelo of TU 95. Wow, I have never in my life. Oh, wait, no, it's not. That's just for the engine cowling. Been so disinterested in any topic whatsoever. Mike, don't stand on the rotors. Those are really expensive. And they oh, break easy. Get off it. You are not the boss of me. I miss you guys. I am the propeller now. Hope is trying to sneak <laughs> up on me. I don't like it. <laughs> Come on, Hope. If you're going to kill him, just stab him right in the face. That's how he likes it. If you're going to kill me, yeah. If you're going to kill me, just do it upright. Stab me in the face, okay? <laughs> I know you've been thinking it. I know you've been thinking it, Hope. Raise your hand if you haven't been thinking of it. That's what I thought. Alright, I'm just gonna take a nap right here. Wake me up in the morning, alright? Wake me up before you go-go. I hate you. <laughs> Loyal, I have things to discuss with you. Really? So we may see our dream of flight soon? 
You hit your face so hard. That wasn't a face palm. That was a face slap. Just loyal. Pearl sent word saying it's all right to tell you about the lady in the water. Oh, is that a bomber? It's in the water that the kid told me about the first day I got here? Bomber was a flying contraption that could drop explosives down on anything it flew over. I know what but a bomber I is, Loyal. <laughs> I was a young man. I've dreamed of raising that lady from the lake and bringing her back to life. How do you expect to raise it from the bottom of the lake, huh, Loyal? Simple. Attach deployable ballast to the plane and float it on up. Here How can I get to the bottom of Lake Mead without drowning? I think that's the real important question here. Might try holding your breath. If that doesn't sound good enough, talk to Jack. He was working on a rebreather once. Why? You live, you're in the middle of a desert. What do you need a rebreather <laughs> for? I'm not saying that I, that I don't appreciate you have been working on one, but what the hell? <laughs> you should have been working on levitation. That's what you should have been working on. Look, you're halfway there. You've already freaking mastered it. I've never been so happy in my entire life. This is the face I make when I'm excessively happy. Yeah, Loyal said you can help me breathe underwater. I just need some parts from a pressure cooker to create a hermetic seal for the rebreather. All you need is a rubber hose, some removable adhesive, also some silk made of corn! <laughs> yes! Yes! Those things! That's a brilliant idea. I can put that together right now. Here you go. A new rebreather. When you said right now, you meant right now. Yeah, I had some corn silk in my pants, like we all do. <laughs> we all carry corn silk. Just just for such an emergency. It's a staple of our economy. <laughs> the Nellis Air Force Space Economy. Driven by corn silk. <laughs> I gotta go. You have fun talking with what's or nuts. Bye. We gotta go breathe corn underwater. <laughs> we gotta go breathe some corn. All right, well, who wants to jump in the lake? Not it. I reckon I haven't. Entering standby mode. Fuck that shit. Ah, oh, damn it. I'm always the one. Are, are going to attach the first ballast. Ballast attached. You don't need to give me a status report every time you perform an action. There's some spooky skeletons in the cockpit of this bomber. I'm turning off the radio now. <laughs> oh god, why did he make it out of corn silk? <laughs> Are you saying you can't breathe corn? Ugh. Just give me give me my detonator. Ugh. All right, it's a momentous occasion. Show me B29 Super Fortress. Neat. Cool. It's going to be a dream come true once you've raised that bomber from Lake Mead. It's floated up. It seems to be in one piece except for the wing which fell off and exploded. That's tremendous. I'll transmit instructions to the robots to start packing up the plane to bring it back to Nellis. Robots? You couldn't have had them do it? No, robots will rust. Not in ten seconds! <laughs> well, I'm glad to have helped. Hey, I'd better get rolling. Jack and I have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, Jack, may I have a word with you? Corn silk rebreather? <laughs> hey. Hey. I almost drowned. He didn't, he didn't say it was a good one. He just said he made one. Okay, whatever. Have you been to their corn storage building, though? No. They have a corn storage building that's just full of corn ethanol. They do not. They do. Where is it? I don't know, but one of these buildings is full of corn ethanol. The biodiesel refinery. What did no, I tell you? you weren't kidding. Oh, man, I'm seeing double in here, dude. Oof. Yeah. Wow! Oh, that's a lot of corn! What did I say? Oh, man! That's you, so much corn! You did not believe me! <laughs> you are in corn heaven, I my feel, friend! I feel kind of drunk. Lightheaded, maybe? Oh, uh, Vincent, don't smoke in here! What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, Vincent, you'll kill us all! Oh, God, we're in corn hell! <laughs>